my question to you would be is, who do you think is, uh, whose seat is hotter, in your opinion, uh, Troy Weaver or Monty, Monty Williams? Yeah, I mean, I wrote about it the other day, too. Um, it kind of depends on what you mean hotter is, right? Like, I think, and I and I wrote about it in the piece, I think there's a world where, obviously, both come back. I think there's a world where both or don't come back. I also think there's a world where Troy remains in the front office, but they hire somebody above him, and then maybe Monty goes. So, like, um, I, I expect there to be some form of change, a pretty drastic change in terms of decision makers. Which way, I'm not sure, 100% sure. Um, but I do think, like, it wouldn't surprise me. Like, who's, like wh who would you classify this as a hotter seat if, if they hire somebody above Troy and keep Troy, uh, but like maybe they part ways with Monty, like so Monty, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, it's uh, so I, I did some digging um, when I, I don't I don't even remember the Pistons putting this out, but this is when they were still part of Fox Sports Detroit, and I can send you the video because I found it really interesting the way Ed Stefanski and Aaron Tellum talked about Troy. It sounded like they just wanted a scout, not really a GM. Just the way they were like kind of like hyping them up as like this um you know talent evaluator and something that the pistons haven't had like ever i remember um, the clip you're talking about yeah i will say this i think both of those guys and i want to make it clear too because i get this all the time like ed is not really involved anymore i know there's a lot and i might have said it last time we were on this pod but like people think ed is um in the war room and things like that like ed's not involved anymore so that i guess that can like is he a friend of many in the front office? And yes, but he's not like in the offices, uh, crunching numbers and all that stuff. Like that's just, it's just not what it is anymore. Uh, but I definitely think one of their, one of Troy's qualities was his scouting. Mm -hmm. um, it, one of his qualities is his scouting and where the Pistons were. I mean, I think that was high on their priority list because if, I mean, you know, you've been a Pistons fan for a long time and, I've covered this team for a long time and have lived in this state and am familiar. Like, I think we can all kind of track back their current issues to poor drafting. Yeah. Um, they're not in this situation today if they drafted better in previous years. Uh, so I think that was important as you're rebuilding specifically. Like, if you're going to do all this losing, you got to get some guys that make it worth it. Um, and I guess now kind of the question is, have they done that? Um, and I think I feel like the, any questions people had about Cade have been answered this year. Like, I think there's no question he's a guy to build around. Um, I, and then other than that, like the other guys have questions, right? And not to say that they're not, I, I think everybody that's been drafted outside of, um, everybody that's been drafted in the first round outside of Killian is an NBA player, uh, and I think that's been part of the Pistons' biggest issue prior to Troy's arrival is their first-round picks. Not only did they struggle in Detroit, but a lot of them weren't even NBA players. Um, yeah. Sekou Dumbuya, Stanley Johnson didn't – I mean, he. I, I think I, I've said this, this spiel many a times, but if you look up – I don't know if you can pull it up really quick, but if you look at the Pistons' first-round picks since 2005 <laughs> – how many were out of the league or at the end of an NBA bench by the age of 27? Um, and we're talking about first round picks, right? Like, yeah, I so mean, Stanley I would... Johnson, uh, uh, Brandon Knight. Yeah, you're uh, gonna make me uh, pull it up because I made a graphic about it not too long ago. Um, yeah. of their because I went down that rabbit hole like the, the last 10, uh, 10 seasons and. I think the only guy that's still in the league today is maybe like Luke Kennard, Casey, KCP. and KCP, and like yeah, KCP is like an elite role player. Yeah, and Andre too. Yeah, but, like yeah. they're all role players. Like that, yeah. that's the problem. And KCP is like an elite one. Like looking yeah. back, like they did well with that pick. It just the situation is what it was. But the issue to me has always been not that these guys haven't broken into stardom. Um, that they've met it's like these guys haven't aren't in the nba when you're supposed to be in your prime and yeah. you can say what you want about the rebuild um and 
and and the guys not necessarily popping as quick as people would like, but I would have a tough time saying that Jaden Ivey, Jalen Duran, Isaiah Stewart, and even Sadiq Bay and Asar Thompson are like going to be out of the league at 26, 27. Uh, whether or not they're all Pistons is a different question, right? But um, so that's kind of the thing to me is like, and to go back to your original point, I think, they just wanted to emphasize drafting. Yeah, um, which I get. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, it's given where they were and what's really hurt the organization. I, I totally understand that. Yeah, I would just say from, you know, talking with fans and, you know, doing podcasts like this, I think more pe- – I could give Monty Williams, and I know people don't want to hear this, I can actually give him a pass for this season just mm-hmm. because it was his first year and he didn't really know what he was going to work with. Now, obviously, I don't agree with everything he did this season, and I, I think fans don't either, but uh, Troy has had a few seasons. I know he's had cap space for a couple of years, but if you kind of just look at the win column, there hasn't really been any progression in that. And I, I think this offseason was a, a complete whiff of the, not going after anybody. Like, I, I think the Joe Harris stuff, yeah, I never understood it. Like, the Monte Moore stuff, I, I was like, okay, it's, that's a veteran backup point guard. But the Joe Harris trade – still to this day makes no sense to me. Um I in hindsight obviously it was bad. Yeah. I, in the moment I didn't I didn't like mind it. I didn't know that the idea was for Joe to play as big of a role as it appeared that they wanted him to even though he was hurt, but I mean I think they got two second round picks to take Joe which yeah. freed up even more cap space. So like I understand it from a uh like a financial flexibility standpoint, but I know everybody's tired of hearing of that at that point and <laughs> this summer is the year that like they got to make use of it. Um, but yeah, I, I think I, I get what you're saying for sure. I think the only just to play devil's advocate. Yes. How do I say this? Um, I think a lot of people wouldn't have be as critical of Monty. If even say the team still only had 13 wins, but Monty didn't favor Killian Hayes over Jade and Ivy, Monty staggered Kate and Ivy. Like once it was clear that this season was going nowhere, not focusing on the development of the players that are most important, I thought was a kind of a head scratcher uh, specifically just because he's been like, I know he just got here, but he's been obviously a coach for a long time. Mm-hmm. So to me, I think a lot of the frustration is the things he did or didn't do didn't feel like something that somebody with his coaching background shouldn't do or not do. Right. Like, so I think the biggest beef people have with Troy Weaver and I, and I understand it and I'm not like saying you should feel any other way. I'm just pointing out what I see is that he's been too frugal. Yeah. Right. I'm, like, yeah. like you can disagree, like the, some of the trades that didn't work, but none of them were like, like you know handicap, I mean? in the grand scheme, handicap you. Yeah, like in the grand scheme of things, they weren't that big of a deal, right? Yeah. It's the frugalness that everybody's like, well, why is this team so bad? Like they didn't spend any money for sure, right? Like that can change when the owner if the owner sits there and says, Hey, you got to spend no matter what. Like, do it. Now, I agree with you that Monty didn't have a lot to work with, has not had a lot to work with. Um but I, I think a lot of like I said, a lot of people's frustration is like, well, why was he playing once they are in the midst of a 28 game losing streak, like why is Killian Hayes still starting and playing big minutes? Why is it take a while for Cade and Ivy to stagger the all bench lineups for a team that clearly doesn't feel has a ton of talent? Why not keep your more talented players out there, even if there are going to be mistakes. Right. So um, I think it's a type of things that Monty did. That's kind of, uh, I think makes the, the leash a bit shorter than, somebody else in his situation with a bad roster if that makes yeah, sense I mean, no I, I i get it uh, i mean i remember being in high school watching murray's cheeks just get the short end of the stick with chorus yeah because <laughs> there, there was like a crazy rumor that he was going after Izzo, which i i never thought was true but i, I just don't think he liked mo cheeks but that was a completely different area completely different regime but uh, I'll, I'll give Monty a pass just for the fact that he just got here but to your point i do agree with like he's been in the NBA he's been coaching for a long time 
Uh, the Killian thing, I didn't really fully understand, but I was just like, hey, why not give a kid one more chance? Who knows? But um, I did it for like a couple weeks. Yeah. It lasted a couple months. Yeah. You know what I mean? I mean, I, don't know. I, I get it. Like, I, I know he's more of a defensive minded coach versus like an offensive minded coach. Like, I felt like Casey was a little bit more offensive minded than Monty. Yeah. But I, I, I get it. Like, if, I, I would probably say for me, Weaver would probably be more on the hot seat. Just, just in my opinion, I, I don't know if. That's a popular opinion by any means. No, I think I, it I, feel, is. Yeah, yeah. I think most it's always in cycles, right? Like when the when they were struggling, everybody wanted Dwayne fired because he mm -hmm. was the longest one around. He's gone. Now it goes to Troy. And it's, well, depending on what happens to Troy, then everybody's attention will go to Monty. Just kind of the cycle of how it goes.